President Emerson Unangogwa was re-elected on Saturday, according to the Zimbabwe Election Commission CEC, with 52.6% of the vote in a vote that detractors have dubbed that Shem and foreign observation teams have decried. Nelson Chumisa, the head of the Citizens Coalition for Change CCC, was Unangogwa's major competitor and was trailing with 44% of the vote, according to CEC Chairperson Justice Priscilla Chikamba. In addition, ZANU-PF gained 136 members in the national parliament, compared to the CCC 73, depriving Unangogwa's party of the necessary two-thirds majority to rewrite the constitution. Since one of the candidates passed away, the race for Kutu West was cancelled. Following the announcement, Unangogwa was scheduled to speak at a news conference, but it was postponed because of claims that he was too exhausted. The election was anticipated to put an end to Zimbabwe's crisis of legitimacy brought on by Mungogwa's contentious victory in 2018. Zimbabweans now live in terror of the future as a result. SADC observers declared the election to be invalid in an extraordinary preliminary report. In a blistering assessment that infuriated the Zimbabwean government, they cited the late opening of polling booths in opposition strongholds. A bias court, interruption of opposition demonstrations, lack of coverage of opposition rallies in state media, and ZEC's lack of independence. The chairman of the delegation, Nevis Mamba, stated that certain aspects of the harmonized election fell short of the criteria of the Zimbabwean constitution, the Electoral Act, and the SADC ideals and guidelines guiding democratic elections. Despite acknowledging that the voting process was many peaceful, observers from the Carter Center, the Commonwealth, the African Union, and the European Union nevertheless voiced harsh criticism. James Risch, a prominent U.S. Senator, suggested on Friday that the international community review its relationship with the Umningkogwa administration and consider new sanctions. In a statement, Fish called the election a sham and added, we must review all aspects of our partnership with the Zimbabwean government that defies its people's will and flouts its laws via acts of violence, looting and impunity. Umlin Gogwa had anticipated to win easily and put a stop to Zimbabwe's decades-long isolation from the rest of the world, which has led to an economic disaster. Such expectations have been dashed by the disputed election, which has created the conditions for a rocky new five-year administration. This will be Yumin Gogwa's second and final term as president because of a two-term restriction established by a new constitution that was approved in 2013. With his internal ZANU-PF enemies uniting around his deputy and potential successor, Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, political observers predict that this might make him a lame duck. The survey was closely followed in Southern Africa as a gauge of public opinion toward Tumnengogwa's 80-year-old ZANU-PF party, whose 43-year dominance has been undermined by a faltering economy and accusations of tyranny. Due to delays in the printing of ballot papers in some important areas, including the opposition strongholds of Harare and Bulawayo, the poll had to extend into an unusual second day. The CCC has criticized the voting process as being fundamentally defective and had more than 100 of its campaign gatherings banned. The SADC went on to say that a number of stakeholders argued that the state-owned media outlets continue to be critical of the opposition. On Wednesday, the first day of voting, less than a fifth of polling places in Harare, a stronghold of the opposition, opened on schedule. Due to the issues, Umnam Gogwa had to issue a late-night order extending the voting by an additional day. The 45-year-old Chumisa criticized the delays as obvious voter suppression, a textbook case of Stone Age. Manipulation Oh